Going Linux Screencast number one. How to use Audacity to record a podcast. Welcome to this Going Linux Screencast. I'm your host, Larry Bushy. And I'm your co-host, Tom. This screencast episode is a companion to the Going Linux audio podcast episodes number 59 and 62 on recording a podcast using Linux. During this screencast, we will be using Ubuntu 8.10, Intrepid Ibex, as the host system and Audacity version 1.3.5 beta for our examples. We will assume you have already installed the Audacity audio recording and editing software and the lame MP3 encoder on your Linux system. For introductory information on the hardware and software you will need to record an audio podcast, go to shownotes.goinglinux.com and listen to our introduction in episode 59 and our advanced episode number 62. We'll get into the nitty-gritty this time of just how you go about recording and using Audacity. Let's jump right into setting up your computer so that you can use Audacity to record an audio podcast. The first thing you'll want to do is to ensure that the sound system within Linux is set for recording audio. Double-click on the little speaker icon that's in the system tray in the panel at the top of a GNOME desktop or at the bottom of a KDE desktop. Well, you either double click on it or right click on it. I'm in XFCE. I have to double click. Yes. Now, when you open the mixer, you may or may not see anything related to recording. There may just be a tab there that says playback. And more often than not, there will be a microphone on the playback panel and that isn't necessarily the microphone that you want to adjust for recording. If you don't see a recording tab, what you can do is click the Preferences button in the mixer, which will open another panel, which will give you a checkbox, a series of checkboxes that include the controls that you can include on the mixer panel. You'll want to make sure that things like Capture or Recording are checked. And you might also want to check the Mic Boost checkbox. I'll explain what that is in a minute. Uh, click Close, and then you'll see a new tab or two, one that says Recording or one that says Options or both. And the, under the Recording tab, you'll see a Capture or a Microphone. You'll want to unmute the microphone if it's muted and increase the volume level for recording or decrease the volume level uh, as you see fit. That microphone boost checkbox that I talked about, if you're using a low-powered microphone and you find that your levels are too low, you may decide that you need to amplify that signal a little bit and there is a mic boost built into some sound cards on computers. And if you see a mic boost checkbox when you hit preferences and you check it, an options tab will open up and that will give you the ability to select or deselect microphone boost. And what that does is it amplifies the sound coming from your microphone by 20 dB. And, and dB is a, me is a measure of sound volume. Uh, and it just amplifies it a bunch so that you might be able to get a little bit more oomph out of that low-powered microphone. If that still doesn't do it for you, you may need a better sound card or you may need an external amplifier or even a mixer to get the sound loud enough to, to record it. Yeah, if you can see a waveform of some sort, you're probably okay. You can amplify it later in Audacity. Right, and if you find that your uh, amplification using Audacity or increasing the volume using Audacity introduces too much noise, there are methods of reducing noise as well. But if you can eliminate the noise up front, that's going to be a much better way than re using Audacity to eliminate the noise using software. Right. Uh, now, just to back up a little bit, 
all of the things that we just said about adjusting your levels, those things are going to change from distribution to distribution and from flavor to flavor. Make sure that you're adjusting the microphone volume on the device that you're using. Yeah, that's right, Tom. And in fact, if you had double clicked on that little speaker icon in the panel and opened the mixer, you'll see that there is a selector there that allows you to choose which device you're controlling with those little sliders and controls and so on. And if your computer has more than one sound device available, and most will because under Linux there are different ways of managing sound, one being ALSA, another one being OSS, uh, and there may be more than one dev device on your computer that handles sound as well. So for each of those, you will have a selection in there. So just test it out a little bit. If you find that your volume on your microphone doesn't respond to the volume control in the mixer, perhaps you're using the wrong device and you need to make that switch before adjusting the volume there on you go. your microphone. There you go. Yeah. So you have to play around with it a little bit to find out how your particular computer is set up, what your sound card is, and how your version of Linux is interacting with it in the mixer. But once you've got that down, it'll be very, very easy to adjust in the future. Sure. Next, let's take a look at the controls in Audacity. You'll find the Audacity program in the Applications menu under Sound and Video. On launching Audacity, you'll notice several controls. At the top of the Audacity window are a number of buttons used for pausing audio, playing audio, stopping a recording or playback. The rewind and fast forward buttons take you to the beginning or to the end of the audio. And the red circle is the record button. In the default configuration, the Tools toolbar is to the right of the control buttons and include tools that will allow you to edit your audio recording. Audacity also includes an Audio Meter toolbar, which allows you to visually monitor the sound being recorded and played back, a Mixer toolbar, and an Editing toolbar for copy, cut, paste, silence, and zooming in and out on the visual display of the audio. The last toolbar at the top includes a playback button and a slider that allows you to play back the audio at slower than normal or faster than normal speeds. On the bottom of the window, Audacity also includes a toolbar that allows you to display and change the recording rate of the audio file, as well as a display of various selections as you're doing your editing. We'll take a look at those a little bit later when we discuss editing. One toolbar that does not show in the Linux version of Audacity by default is the Device Toolbar. The device toolbar allows you to switch between various audio sources for recording and audio playback devices as well. So if your computer includes more than one audio, you will want to display the device toolbar in addition to the standard toolbars that are displayed in the default Audacity under Linux. To display the device toolbar, select View from the menu then Toolbars, and place a check mark next to Device Toolbar. When you do that, the toolbar normally displays as a floating toolbar. You can drag it and dock it to any location in the Audacity window. I prefer it on the bottom, so we'll drag it there. With the Device Toolbar displayed, you'll see that next to the Speaker icon, you have a selection for which device to use for playback and next to the microphone icon you have the same selections this time for which device to use for recording. Whether you are using a mixer or a microphone plugged directly into your computer you can make the selection for that device in this list. In my case I'm using an external mixer 
that is identified as OSS slash dev slash DSP and I will select that for my recording device. Next you'll want to set up Audacity's preferences in order to control the way the recording will be made. Preferences are under the Edit menu in the Linux version of Audacity and selecting preferences brings up a dialog box that includes a number of selections two of which we will look at here today. You'll notice in the Audio I.O. or Audio Input Output selection there are drop-down selectors for the same playback and recording devices that were in the device toolbar. On the recording side however you'll also see a selector for number of channels to use. By default Audacity chooses stereo. For our recording of the Going Linux podcast, we record in mono. There are reasons for recording in mono versus stereo, primarily related to the type of recording you're making. If your recording will be in stereo and you will be including music or other high fidelity audio in your recording, you may want to choose stereo. For our purposes in the Going Linux podcast, we are primarily using a talk show format and so our audio is simply voices for the most part except for the introductory music. So we record our podcast in mono in order to keep the file size to a minimum so that our listening audience when downloading from the website or subscribing in a podcatcher like iTunes, Amarok, or Rhythmbox will have a minimal file size to download. For the same quality audio, a stereo recording is, generally speaking, twice as large as a mono or single channel recording. The next preference that you may or may not need to change is located under the Import Export section. Clicking Import Export on the left, you'll notice the MP3 Export Library. If you want to export your final audio file as an MP3, you'll need a little encoder that doesn't come with Audacity because it is encumbered by licensing and so it's not included with the free program, but you can download it separately. It's called LAME, L-A-M-E. You can go to the Audacity website and they'll have a link to LAME there, but if you are using something like Ubuntu or one of its variants, if you go to the Synaptic Package Manager or under Kubuntu the Adept Package Manager and search for Ubuntu-Restricted-Extras, that will install a number of codecs, some fonts, and a number of other uh, packages that make multimedia much easier to use under Ubuntu. The one thing that you'll need to be aware of is if you do not want commercial or license restricted software on your computer, in other words if you want to maintain free as in freedom on your computer you will not want to install that. In fact you will not be able to use an mp3 encoder, you'll need to get mp3 files created some other way. On the other hand if you are okay with using commercial software or licensed software on your computer, LAME is free, the Ubuntu restricted extras are free, free as in beer, and you can get them through the package manager and I imagine under most Linux distributions you can get it along with Audacity in whatever software repositories or sources are available for your distribution. And if you're not going to go with LAME, the alternative is AUG, OGG. Right. And Audacity is able to create an AUG file with no problem right, at all. Right, right out of the box. Exactly. So if you want to be a purist, if you want to be a Linux geek purist and stick with AUG, you might be shutting out a part of your audience because some people can't play AUG files. But that would be the way to go. If you've already installed the LAME codec 
or chosen the Ubuntu Restricted Extras package, Audacity will already have selected the lame encoder that you've downloaded. If it has not, you'll want to use these buttons provided to download and locate on your hard drive the libmp3lame.so.0 file that represents the lame encoder. Once found, click OK, or if it's already selected, click OK on the Preferences dialog box to save your changes. For recording your first podcast, you can safely assume that the default settings for the remaining preferences in Audacity will work just fine in most cases. If you do find that you need to make adjustments in the Preferences dialog box, you'll also find settings that control the sample rate of the audio recording, the sample format, and controls for importing and exporting your finished audio file. For now, let's just assume that the default preferences will meet our requirements. Now we're ready to record our first audio track. You'll likely want to make a test recording in order to determine whether or not your audio levels for your microphone are set high enough or low enough to ensure that you have good quality sound. To begin a test recording, press the red record button and begin speaking when the cursor begins to move. Okay, let's talk about levels. And as you're recording in Audacity, you'll see the waveform right on the screen. And the waveform is going to be in the center between a top line and a bottom line. So start talking into your microphone. Talk as loud as you think you might talk during your podcast. And make sure that you don't hit the top line or the bottom line. And as a matter of fact, if you turn it down a little bit more than that, if you have a kind of a minimal waveform, don't worry about it. You can always amplify it later. Yeah, that's that's very important because if you go over the top or the bottom line, what happens is your voice gets clipped. And what I mean by clipped is there's no signal above or below the line. So any additional volume you have gets cut off. Think of it this way. Your speaker moves in and out to move the air. Well, let's say the top line represents the speaker being pushed out as far as it can possibly be. So anything past that, you're not going to hear. And the bottom line is the speaker pushed in as far as it can possibly be. Uh, Larry, let's let people hear what clipping sounds like. And we're going to do it right now. And one, two, three, go. Now, this is what terribly clipped audio sounds like. Okay, sorry about that. I know it sounded bad, but now you know. And the way you prevent clipping is to turn the volume down on your right. input. And some of our listeners who have never recorded any audio may be wondering how to do that exactly. If you're using a mixer, there will be a knob or a slider or something on the mixer to turn down your microphone input, and that's probably the most straightforward thing you could ever do. But if you're not, if you're using a headset mic or that, that doesn't come with its own volume control, then what you're left with is the Linux volume control, the mixer that's built into Linux. In GNOME, if you click on it, it will bring up a little volume slider and you can adjust the volume up or down. If you double click on it, it will open the mixer panel and you'll have a whole bunch of controls that you can use. Once I've found the correct levels, I'll stop the recording by hitting the stop button. And now I'm ready to record my first real audio track. You can delete these existing tracks by clicking the X in the upper left-hand corner of the track, and that closes and deletes that particular track of recording. Now let's record a podcast. In episodes 59 and 62 of the Going Linux podcast, we discussed the double-ender technique for recording a podcast where two hosts each record their own 
audio track and then they're mixed together later. That's the technique we'll be using here. I'll be recording my audio while Tom is recording his in his location that is physically distant from mine. We begin the recording as we did before by clicking the record button with the red circle. Now let's show people what it really sounds like when we start out a podcast. Larry says, Going Linux episode 62. What, what, what's the title of this one, Tom? <laughs> Podcasting with Linux Advanced. Right, okay. Podcasting with Linux, the advanced episode. And then it's really quiet. And maybe I say something like, and the music plays. And then we go on. And then Larry edits it later and sticks the music in. Right. Or sometimes Tom will hum the theme or something like that. When you have finished recording the audio for your podcast, click the Stop button to end the recording. This will stop the recording, but will not have saved your file at this point. To save the file as an Audacity project, select File from the menu and choose Save Project. At this point, you can select the directory on your hard drive where you want to save the file. In this case, we'll choose Going Linux and we'll create a new folder called GLP 62. Open that folder and name the file GLP for Going Linux Podcast 062-Larry and click Save. Audacity will save the file with the name I've given it and the file extension AUP, indicating that this is an Audacity audio project. An audio project is not a single wave MP3, AUG, or other format file that you would be able to play back in a regular audio player. It is made up of tiny bits of audio stored in a way that Audacity recognizes for ease and speed of editing using Audacity software. An explanation of the difference between saving and exporting. Saving saves the project, which is not just a single file. Audacity creates a number of subfolders in the folder you put the project on your hard drive. And in each of those subfolders is a little snippet of the audio. And somehow Audacity knows how to assemble all of those. And I think that's indeed the magic that allows you to go back and edit just about at any time and undo what you've done before. So you really don't want to be using that file for anything other than your editing or recording. You want to use an exported file, and that's where you take the Audacity program, open up your project, and then use the export function to create an MP3 file or to create a WAV file or an AUG file. And that is the export function, where you're creating a single file from your edited project. Now it's time to edit your project. Let's now close Audacity and wait for Tom to send me his file. Well, now we've completed our tutorial on using Audacity to record an audio podcast. And although we were using the Linux operating system, most, if not all, of what we have discussed can be applied to using Audacity under any other computer operating system. Thanks for listening, and thanks for watching. Talk to you later. Music provided by Mark Blasco at podcastthemes.com.